put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie, 1995, Game Review. Not having a manual, I'm not entirely certain what the plot is supposed to be, but basically you're out to defeat Ivan Ooze and the creatures working for him as the entire team of Power Rangers, that being the black, blue, red, yellow, and yes, white. This is a fairly standard, you know, side-scrolling beat-em-up game, and the graphics and features are quite indicative of the format. This was released for, like, the Game Boy. That's, that's where I played it, anyway. And... I'd say what really makes this stand out, because this is one of the games I really, really enjoy for the Game Boy. And a lot of it is where it's very much like the show in the movies. I grew up really liking Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I have not watched any other Power Rangers show, and I probably never will. Yeah, I can be just a horrible purist in that way sometimes. Now... The things I liked about the show were basically the martial arts and the awesome theme tune, which, you know, I still love to this day. And <laughs> while the music in this version is, of course, a bit hard on the ears, again, format issues, you know, they, they couldn't do that much with good sound back then. But the ass-kicking combat is pretty good. I mean, it's fairly limited for, you know... I can think of other games for the same format that have more, you know, better combat. Basically, you have one... You know, I, I don't... I always mix up the A and the B button, but let's just say A button punches... A button attacks and B button jumps. So, you know, they actually, would, you, know, you could have just put jump on the up, on the D-pad, but whatever, you know, okay, so we have one key to attack, and that's about it. And, you know, you can jump and attack, you can be standing still and attack, and you can duck and attack. And, basically, you know, the, the attacks will vary be between three or four different ones when you, for example, duck. You know, there'll, there'll be a punch and then a kick and various ones. Now, where this is very much like the show in the movie is, you know, in addition to you being able to play as all of the rangers, you know, it, basically when you start the game you choose a ranger to play as and every time you die, if you can continue, you'll get to choose your ranger, you know. And it's not like in, you know, other games where they get, like, you know, killed and you have to choose someone else, like in the Toxic Avenger game for the Game Boy. But anyway, you can't really tell apart the, the various rangers, except for the white one, because he wears very white clothing. But the others, they really look alike. So, yeah. But, basically, the your main enemy are the putties, which is, you know, very much like the show. They fight a lot of putties, and you could argue that it almost has that thing of, you know, them having to be hit in the chest to be defeated. Now, there are six levels, and each one has at least one boss fight. And 
The final one is, of course, the eye of an ooze. I'm not particularly partial to, but the creatures that you fight as boss enemies do, in fact, include Goldar, who teleports and uses his blade quite viciously, and Lord Zed. So that's really badass. And Lord Zed does indeed use, you know, magic to attack you and, you know, with the staff and everything. Now, every boss fight is a pretty good challenge. You have to actually figure out their movement pattern and attack them based on that if you want any chance of winning. Because otherwise, they're actually quite powerful and they can knock you down. And, see, I recently talked about the Hercules game. This is a game that does the you can get knocked down thing right because there is not a huge amount of time, of stun time for you and basically, this is going to sound offensive to people who are maybe having trouble with this game, and I, I don't blame you because it, it's a really challenging game, especially, you know, later on. If you do what you're supposed to, you basically won't get stunned. I mean, there are a couple of times where they pretty much don't give you a chance to, you know, take out the enemy before they knock you out. Although typically you won't, you'll only get hurt like once when that happens. But basically, if you use the right tactic against a boss, or if you, you know, if you take care of the dangerous enemy and you know, stuff like that, if you if you do it right, you're not going to get hurt. And this is this is how I think video games. Yeah, you know, this is my favorite kind of that you know kind of thing in a video game. You know, that's uh, the games I grew up with. If you mess up, you you might die. If you don't, you're scot free. You know, if if you do it right, you know, it actually rewards you for doing, you know, for figuring out how to solve a puzzle, and that really, you know, appeals to my mind. But anyway, yes, your main enemy is indeed the putties, and they do over time increase in difficulty. You know, they get better at fighting and they get tougher to beat. Like, you know, they'll take more, you know, punches and kicks before they go down. And they also graduate to occasionally throwing knives, which doesn't really fit with the show, but whatever, they had to give them a ranged attack. I can see that, you know, they to up the ante with that. And eventually they start firing rocket launchers, which is really not something I see them doing in the show, but whatever. Now, another thing where this is very much like the show and movie, and one thing I absolutely love about it is you don't actually start out as the ranger. You know, it's like in the show and the movie. Well, I don't remember the movie. I, I've worked hard to block it out. Just ask my therapist. No, the the show, they start out as just the teenagers in the, you know, color-coded clothing because kids are dumbasses and we can't tell, you know, what are the names, Trini and Kimberly of Heart? No, of course not. They You need to actually color coordinate. Anyway, and they fight off the putties and then, you know, like, they... You know, they get, they go up against a tougher enemy and they have to morph. And in this, you have to earn the ability to morph. You know, there's this power meter at the bottom of the screen, which gradually fills up. Every time you defeat an enemy, although sometimes I think it actually fails to count, but whatever. Usually when you defeat an enemy, excuse me, a regular enemy. Boss enemies give you like three bars of the meter. But... A regular enemy, one meter of one bar of the meter, and sometimes if you do really well, they'll also drop power ups, including uh, the lightning bolt from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers logo, and that increases it by one. And they'll also drop hearts, which increase increase your health. You'll really want to watch your health because you'll need as much of it as you can maintain against the bosses. Another thing I really love that you know. It's a real challenge against the bosses. You really feel like you accomplish something when you defeat a boss. And this has a password system, so if you just defeat one boss and you're like, okay, I'm done, I need a break before I continue with this, you can, you know. Now, 
Yes, so, you know, once the meter is entirely full the first time, you'll want to actually use it as fast as you can, because you can't refill the meter before you've used it. You press select, and he morphs, you know, and you see the full animation, you know, they do the hold up the, th the thing, I think it's something like this, you know, hold up the morpher, and you, you see like a white light sh shine down from above, and they sh turn into their Power Ranger. And bonus, if you're if you do that as a White Ranger, he's gonna swing that scimitar weapon thing he has, really badass. And no, once they've morphed, you still can't really tell them apart, except for White Ranger and the rest, you know. Anyway, the. But yes, and if you actually manage to fill it up a second time, which can be done, at least in some levels, they can do a really powerful attack. I don't know exactly what it is they're doing, but, you know, again, something from the show, you see the coin, you know, which actually really helps to identify which ranger you're using. It's actually the only way, just about, that I've found that can help you identify them. And it does some damage on, it'll, it'll typically do some damage on a boss enemy, which is really where you should use it. You should save it for that. But you can also use it against regular enemies, and it's that, you know, kill everyone on the screen right now kind of thing that, you know, common to a bunch of different video games. Now, you get, go through a couple of different settings, you know, there there's this cave with... Stalactites, stalagmites, and I always mix them up, but the ones from the top, and they like fall down and you have to avoid them. There's like this flamethrower thing that you have to time your jumps for. There are, you know, the, as usual with games from this era, there are these like. Well, I, I don't remember what it's called, but it's basically something where if you stand on it, it'll move you off to a side. And of course, at the end of it, there's, you know, a fall to your death. So you have to be careful not to, you know, be carried all the way. And you also have to be careful not to move too far the other direction, because that's where the enemies are coming, of course. And for some reason, there's bats in this game. I don't know. Now, there are, and there are a couple of other additional enemies. There's these star bomb things that move diagonally. There are, you know, there are various different ones. And sometimes you have to, like, crouch to take out an enemy and stuff like that. Now, something I also kind of like about the, you know, if you fight a lot of putties and you are careless, if you get yourself swamped by them, you know, they can take you out because they'll keep stunning you and, you know, eventually kill you. So you have to be careful that you don't get attacked too much when there's a group and at the same time manage to take them out because you can't just hide from them constantly, you know, you can't, like, out outrun them or something, you know. And sometimes, you know, over the course of the game, they will come from both sides at you at the same time. There is... Yeah, there's not a huge amount of replayability, and the game, if you don't mess up a bunch of times, can actually be beaten in an hour and a half, I think, actually, <laughs> just about. So, you know, and with only two difficulty settings, and no, like, unlockables, this is, you know, yeah, I'm not sure many games had unlockables back then, but, yeah, so, really, there's not that much, other than, you know, the different choices of Power Rangers, although unfortunately they don't particularly seem to have like different attacks, although I did seem to note that at one point one of them seemed to attack much faster, which actually got me through a level that seemed really very troublesome. But yeah, it's a very fun, enjoyable game if you are a fan of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and, you know, and if you're into basic beat-em-up side-scrolling action, so... Yeah, that's pretty much it, but yeah. Very nostalgic, very retro. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.